Let's go to Zanzibar. I have always wanted to go to Zanzibar and I was so excited about this trip. Every year, my husband and I, we book a trip to fly somewhere out of the country. This trip was about 13 hours to Dubai. We had a layover in Dubai. We spent a couple days there. I'll do a separate vlog on that. And then from Dubai, we flew to Ethiopia, Ethiopia to Zanzibar. So it was pretty much an entire day trip. Our flight was delayed on the way there. We got stuck in New Jersey. And you know, the good thing about having a credit card that has benefits such as travel protection and access to priority lounges is that we got to spend time in a comfortable area in one of the lounges which was so amazing we had you know an unlimited amount of drinks unlimited amount of food and just amenities like showers and beds if we needed it and because of that travel protection please believe we were refunded for this portion of the trip because i don't play that so the time difference from where we are we live on the east coast and the time difference was about seven or eight hours ahead i believe ethiopia was seven hours ahead uh dubai and Zanzibar might have been eight hours ahead. I, I don't remember, but just make sure you plan for the time difference as well. When we do travel, we like to fly out on Tuesdays and Wednesdays because I've noticed a significant amount of money saved when we book flights on those days. I also try to search on kayak and Google for flights on Sundays and Tuesdays because the flights are typically lower when I search on those days as well. I spent a lot of time doing my research before taking this trip. I wanted to make sure that we were staying in the right locations, we were staying in the right hotels, and also just about the culture. Zanzibar is an Islamic area, and so I wanted to make sure that I packed, you know, decent clothing for the times that we were going to be off of the resort. You can go to the Department of State website to check for any travel advisories. There were a few advisories, but nothing to worry about. You do need a visa to get into Zanzibar and you also need to prepare by taking a couple of shots just in case. My yellow fever, typhoid was still good. Um, my husband didn't take any shots actually. He just didn't have time to do it. I did carry some malaria pills because I tend to get bit up by mosquitoes every and anywhere that I go. So that's just something I do as a precaution. We stayed in the northeast coast of Zanzibar in an area called Kiwingwa, and we stayed at the Tui Blue Bahari Zanzibar. This hotel was a five-star hotel, and it was just exceptional. And something that was so cool to me was that I actually met like five Aishas there, <laughs> and they were just so kind, beautiful women. Everybody was just very welcoming. The staff was amazing. This particular hotel was on the shore of one of the beaches. During the morning, like around 6, 7 a.m., you can walk out in the middle of the ocean just walking on sand. And that's because the tide was so low. And then by like 3 p.m., the tide would come back in. And as you can see here, you can see the tide is low here as well. And then it will come back in and the water would be like hitting and splashing the hotel. But it was beautiful. We were encountered by the Maasai tribe who would take us out during the day and show us different sea creatures when the tide was low and just teach us about different types of animals that honestly we've never seen before. This area of Zanzibar is known for its clear water and its white sand, but the part that they don't tell you, yes, there's going to be a lot of seaweed and that was something that, you know, it didn't bother us, it was perfectly fine, but I like to explore things on my own because not everything you see online is going to be as what it seems. This was my husband's first time in Africa so it was a little bit of a culture shock for him just certain things that he witnessed and noticed. For me this was my I guess fourth time. I went to Morocco, Angola, Egypt and then now Zanzibar. One thing we did do was focus heavily on engaging and meeting the locals and instead of working with the hotel to provide car rides and taxis and tour guides we just found people that were local to help us out and we worked with a particular guy his name was Solomon and he took us around anywhere we needed to go but he also connected us to his friends and let us work with these small businesses so that we can give back and support.
one of these tour guides said, you know what, we're going to take you out and you can go swimming with the dolphins. And so we did that one day, got in the boat and we went swimming with the dolphins. My husband did not go swimming with the dolphins. He wasn't really into that. And so he just watched me and pretty much laughed at me the whole time. <laughs> so you're not going to be driving on busy highways and getting from point A to point B in 20 seconds. A lot of these trips that we took took a couple hours. I had to drive to a location to get on the boat. And then from the boat, we had to ride on the boat for a while in order to see the dolphins. Once we saw the dolphins, we were able to jump in the water and you kind of have to move quickly because they dive deep so fast. Once you jump in, you can see them, I guess at the top of the water and then they dive deep. And then by then you're not gonna be able to see them because the water is so deep and it's just so dark down there. But I was able to witness this. It was an incredible experience and I really had a great time. I was stung by a jellyfish. It was a tiny fish and it wasn't so terrible. It was okay and I wasn't in too much pain. Um, I also had so much liquid in my ear. I had some pain in my ear. So the next portion of the trip, we went snorkeling. I didn't do the snorkeling part. My husband did. I just kind of sat on the boat and waited for that water to kind of drain out of my ear this area the tide was extremely low and the water was crystal clear i could see straight through to the bottom finished our swimming with the dolphins well i swam with the dolphins how about you Chris? I swam with the fishes he went snorkeling and i went swimming with the dolphins so now we are at the sea bank just chilling Apparently we are not allowed to enter the island behind us because it is partly owned by Mr. Bill Gates. <laughs> I think that's what you looked up. No, it didn't say that. Somebody said that, but oh. it's We had the option to go to Prison Island and go look at some other historic sites, but also visit the turtle sanctuary. That wasn't really something we were interested in doing, swimming with the turtles and feeding the turtles. I just didn't want to bother the turtles. You know, they're in their home chilling, so we didn't participate in that. If I would have stayed an extra week, I think we probably would have flown into Tanzania inland and done one of the safaris, but that would have taken an extra three days. It takes a long time to drive into the campsite. I would have to plan if I wanted to stay the night. And so I just figured, you know what, this is something I'm gonna do when I come back. Zanzibar has a diverse background. You're gonna see a lot of Indian, Arabic, African, Asian. It's a melting pot of so many beautiful cultures. And the food, the cuisine is just amazing. I have never tasted fresh fruit in my life the way that I've tasted fruit as in Zanzibar. The fruit was delicious. I mean, I tore that fruit up every single freaking day. As you can see here, I'm eating some Nutella on a waffle. I lived in Spain for a year and I ate Nutella every single day for breakfast. So this is me and picturing the time that I gained 20 pounds when I lived in Spain. Hey, you only live once, right? Welcome to Stone Town. Stone Town has a significant history. Zanzibar in general, just a very historic history with the spice trade and unfortunately also the slave trade. 
it was a hub for the spice trade and they have several spice plantations as well. Stonetown is known for its vibrant markets, its ancient streets and narrow streets and ancient buildings, but you can just feel all the culture in this little town. The tourism, the spice market, fishing, even seaweed is a significant part of Zanzibar's economic system. So we spent this day just buying some spices. I bought a lot of spices that I used to cook my meat and I still have it here and I cook with it as we speak now. And we walked around visiting some historical sites. <laughs> We said goodbye to Piwingwa and headed to Nungui. This is the northern, very northern part of Zanzibar. This is where all the entertainment is and the lively beaches. Those who want to do the nightlife, this is where you need to stay. And it took us maybe about two hours to drive up north. It was a beautiful drive just going through different neighborhoods and seeing all the culture and beautiful people and wild animals and waiting for cows to cross the street. It was great. We had a good time here because we actually met another group of friends from the Maasai tribe. We actually encountered some of our old friends from Kiwingwa that came up. And so we hung out together. But the sunsets and the sunrise on this beach was like none I've seen before. Just gorgeous. Maybe you are the check on no one you are one and no, 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 this is fair. I you baby, sweet, baby, baby, nice, baby, to the duty, body, quite time, show my poor taxi, my little boy, I don't need, but you are for the walk, oh, I'm not
So this hotel is the Royal Zanz Bar and we had a nice stay here as well. There were a couple issues with the hotel, but overall we had a good time. Because the hotel is near the beach or on the beach, there were certain water resources that were not readily available at the hotel. The dryer broke down, the washers were not working very well. So a lot of our towels had a very like mold or mildew smell. But, you know, you also have to kind of find that balance because, you know, you have to consider what part of Africa you're in and realize that there are not always going to be resources available compared to maybe where you come from. And so we just had a good time. We continued to meet new friends. We went out into the area where some of our friends from the Maasai tribe lived. I met some of their wives and some of their children and we got to hang out with them, which was a great experience. We bought some items from them. They made us personal items and, you know, we just took time to chill and relax. We didn't want to do a whole bunch of running around and going here and going there because we do work a lot. We are tired by the time we get on vacation. So we wanted to actually just rest and relax. Nungui is also one of the last traditional spots where you can actually see the Dao boat building and I'm sure I'm pronouncing it incorrectly. These craftsmen use old ancient techniques in their boat building because the tide is not heavily affected as it is in different areas of Zanzibar. Nungui is the best place for consistent swimming and just doing different water activities. It's always best to carry some form of cash because when you're on the beach and you're supporting the local businesses, you don't want to pull out an ATM card, obviously, but the currency are shillings and you want to negotiate ahead of time before you book a taxi cab or arrange transportation as well. You can also get on the Dala Dala, which is the little bus that drives around. It is extremely tiny. It's like a tiny little van and it's always very crowded to the point where sometimes people are hanging off the edge of the van, but it's a very traditional way to get around. And I think if you can experience it, I would definitely say go for it. Everyone, like I said, was very warm, welcoming. You know, we were surrounded by just incredible people. And the way to greet each other is jumbo, which means hello, good morning. Everybody, when they see you, jumbo, jumbo, jumbo. Dialect or the language predominantly spoken in Zanzibar is Swahili. Like I said, it is an Islamic area predominantly muslims live in zanzibar and so sometimes you're going to hear the call for prayer on the intercom of the mosques just be respectful be careful where you smoke be careful where you drink and just be attentive to your surroundings and the culture <laughs>
so we said goodbye to our friends and on the way back guess what <laughs> we got stuck in zanzibar maybe like i don't know 12 extra hours they put us up in a hotel they overbooked our flight and guess what you better believe i got a refund for that too <laughs> But we had an incredible time. If you're thinking of going to Zanzibar, I hope that this vlog helped. I hope some of these tips that I provided helped and I wish you all the best in your trip, that you enjoy your time because it is a beautiful place to visit.